There, I duck here, and I just want to thank you for uh, joining in today. Uh, first, a uh, couple comments. I'm the I duck because I am an I doctor, hence my nickname I duck. It's a nickname I've had for a while now, um, and it's sort of stuck. So I'm the I duck, and uh, I appreciate you following us on Daily Driven. We're trying to get a lot of projects in today, uh, including uh, swapping the seat out, um, putting a rear harness bar and some uh, racing harnesses, and then maybe some racing studs. Uh, so come along with us for the ride. So we're going to remove the seat of the car first. In order to do that, we're actually going to uh, disconnect the battery. And you may ask, why bother disconnect the battery? Well, on the 400, the uh, car has side, air impact, side airbags. And so just to be safe, before we detach anything or do anything with the airbag, we're going to actually detach the battery, okay? So... And as you can see, here's my Shirai battery. So we're just going to detach the negative ground. <clears throat> so it's detached. And pull it out of the way for the time being. Two leads on it, as you can see. Get that out of the way. Put the screw back in place so we don't lose it. Alright. In case you're curious, here's my Shirai uh, Install, which was basically uh, using the factory base plate. Um, <clears throat> I drilled two holes, one in the side edge here and one in the base here. So I'm going to put my two down hold, my hold downs, I should say. Um, and then it holds it on top. Pretty simple. And then I sealed the uh, vent tube because we certainly don't need to vent any gases with this uh, Shirai battery. Okay, I'm going to put a towel here just so in case the struts decide to fail. You don't lock your trunk. Then you want to slide the seat all the way forward first and pop the trunk. There should be one, at least one connection here for starters. This is the connection for the um, seat belt indicator or seat belt sensor. So just unplug that. Nice and simple. There are then two Allen keys right here in the back and the same thing in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen them up all the way. This is a 5mm socket. And the seat has to be folded down to get access to these completely. go and then we'll tilt the seat towards me. The seat does weigh a ton. And then before we pull it out, let's peek on the inner side to see what's there. I'm gonna tilt it up slowly and you can see on the inner side there's just there you pop it there. Thumb. It should all come undone. So it actually has interesting both connections together and a single plug keeps them together which is kind of helpful. So now the seat's loose, so now I'm going to come back and slowly pull it out, making sure I don't destroy the interior. This is where a second pair of hands would be sometimes helpful, but you can see how heavy it is. I have it leaning on my cloth here. Oh shit, second cord cable. I didn't even see. And this one's strapped in, so that was one. The other one has a quick like slow. 
This is the airbag one, clearly. The other one, hold down. Good. Let's go weigh this seat. So, I'm gonna be the uh, standard. So I weigh 168.5. Ooh, need to diet. So I'll reset it on my thinner. <coughs> um, lift the sucker up. And then step on there again. And see how much a sucker weighs. 213 minus 168.5 equals 44.5 pounds. All right, so let's remember that. And later on, at the seat, you can see that my seat is untucked on this side already. P I T A, pain in the ass. Um, there's construction here, untucking here. And then if we flip this around, totally untucked and looks like they tried to glue it or something, which is really shitty work. Hmm. Go Lotus. So, again, if I can unbolt these here, one, two, three, that'll get this side off. And then for this side, one, two, and three there should get this off. All right, these can come off. A little work, like so. Good. There's a complete seat rail set, and it looks like so. So now we will build a bracket to match that. Okay, so there's that. And the other thing we need is this sucker. So, zip tied in a couple places and tucked. So I need to unzip tie and to untuck it. Sparco sports seat, then they're in black. Let's just put this on the side for the time being. We're Rev 2000, that's online. Um, I got it for just under 800 bucks. I actually bought it through Amazon because uh, it provides free shipping when you have Amazon Prime, so you might as well take advantage of that because shipping for that could be pretty expensive. So let's go weigh it. Um, the decision for me to get a Sparco seat. Um Sparco racing seat as opposed to seats in the uh, current uh, factory 400 seats uh, is as follows. Number one, I wanted a stiffer seat um, that gave more lateral support and in particular was stiff uh, also in terms of the recliner, meaning that uh, the factory seats have, have pretty good lateral support, uh, but I find I'm still kind of swimming around in them a little bit. And on top of that, I think uh, I find that over time that they start reclining backwards. And so I felt it would be a good time to uh, replace it with a uh, rigid seat. I'm only replacing the driver's seat because uh, I still need a folding seat to get access to the rear. And so I'll leave the passenger seat in place uh, so that my boys can get in the back um, or packages when I need to. There are a uh, couple other considerations. The uh, question is whether I want a, a very easy drop-in seat or one with a lot of adjustability. And so Sparco makes both seats with side mounts, which are the traditional racing seats or uh, bottom mount seats. As it turns out, these uh, Pro 2000 seats uh, actually have bottom, mount mounting, bottom mounting holes as well as side mounting holes, so it gives a lot of flexibility. So I figured that if I use the bottom mounting holes that I could uh, drop this directly into the uh, 400 
uh, since the Evora 400 seats are also made by Sparco. Uh, so I got a, another set of uh, bottom mount uh, sliders uh, and we'll show how to mount that up in a second. Let's reset. Step on this bad boy. One ninety two point five. Twenty four pounds. So we've dropped about twenty pounds on that deal. This is uh the uh Schroth roll rails and the Schroth rails are much narrower than these, so I'm gonna have to make brackets to make it fit. Which is okay, we can do that. So what we need to do is basically measure the distance between two, two holes and then measure the distance between two holes and then I'm going to make a metal piece that goes across for both to cover those two. Now some people may say you should do it this way, um, but we have plenty of space and so it'll square it up nicely. Two little brackets like so, cross. That'll square it up. Or I could do it this way also. The thing is then you'd see all metal way long, so I'd rather just do it this way. Okay, so we're looking here 13 and a half. We're just gonna two bolts and this confirm here, 13 and a half. So it will be center to center, 17 is 36 inches. Alright, so here's the brackets I made, which are uh, basically uh, metal, 18 inches wide. Cut some pilot holes in it and use the factory spacers. And then now I'm going to put the uh, factory seat base on, as you'll see right now. And here's a factory seat base with the uh, seat belt holder, which I'm going to fix in a second to put the seat belt on. And this lateral one, oh, lateral, I'm using uh, medical terms, the uh, side one. Um, is uh, for the extra uh, lap belt. So this is gonna go bolt right under there. So I'll show you how. At this moment, uh, the batteries on my uh, GoPro died, uh, but I didn't want to finish, uh, stop to uh, charge it up, so I just continued my install. First attempt, I uh, bolted the uh, factory seat rails to the uh, new frame I made for the seat uh, using four 13 millimeter nuts. And then I lowered the seat into the driver's compartment and attempted to uh, bolt it to the floor, uh, but was not able to access the two front mounting holes in the seat rails because they are now blocked by the seat despite adjusting uh, the seat rails. So second attempt, I bolted the seat rails directly to the floor first, um, and that was uh, done easily by using the four uh, Allen bolts, and then I lowered the seat on top of the seat rails and bolted the seat to the seat rails with uh, four 13 millimeter nuts, and uh, it was uh, secured. Uh, finally, I attached the uh, seat belt alarm wiring, and as you can notice, I also attached the two Schroth uh, lap belts uh, for a perfect fit. This is the uh, driver's side seat. As you can see, here's our Pro 2000 Sparco seat. And as I pan down, you can see uh, here is the mount right here in the front, and then the same thing here in the back. This is the add on. Uh, seat harness mount that was provided by Simply Sports Cars uh, that goes along with their harness setup. And the thing I do notice is that um, after initial install, I actually removed the rear spacers. So this I dropped the back compared to the front. Um, in reality, this racing seat actually sits up a little bit higher than the factory seat, uh, 
uh, with the spacers and even if I had the spacers didn't have the spacers um, it sits up a little bit higher just because of the design of where these rails are in relationship to the seat um, so that's something that um, I may address with just straight side mounts down the road because I'm finding that it is a little higher than I would like but overall the install looks really good um, the seat um, just works well and if you look on the other side here you can peek down the hall there are the other mounts here using the factory seat bolt seat belt mount and then mounting uh, the uh, Schroth ASM uh, harness uh, to it a couple final comments about the seat. I find the seat is very comfortable. Um, I like the stiff uh, back. Um, it gives me much more support and makes and uh, forces me to sit uh, in a more upright and a slouch position, which is good for my lower back. Um, I do like the uh, lateral support uh, much better. The seat is actually snug, which is a fit that I like. Um, and finally, as you can see, my uh, little ducklings have a lot more room in the back. They actually have more foot room behind the seat than they did uh, behind the factory seat. So anyway, this is the first video. Uh, you should see more videos uh, coming soon, uh, focusing on the uh, rear harness mount um, and some other goodies uh, for this uh, daily driven Lotus. So uh, stay tuned and thanks for watching.